Hello, and welcome back to the Thought Cloud podcast. Our goal with this conversation is to help students find their passions by hearing what their peers are passionate about. Our guest today is Beiruz Mamudov. Beiruz is an incoming sophomore at Harvard University where he's creating his own special concentration in neuroscience and poetry. He got accepted into all eight Ivy Leagues and Stanford and had a hard time choosing the perfect one to go to. But we're going to dig into that. We're going to hear about what he's done in college. And uh, Beirut, we're super excited to have you on today to tell us about your story. So thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, shout out to Yuan for uh, putting this out. Um, he's such a cool guy. So go Yuan. And uh, yeah, uh, eight, eight Ivy Leagues and Stanford. Uh, I actually, um, when I was applying to colleges, I was pretty set on uh you know, shooting my shot at Harvard uh, for early action. Uh, so I sent in my application um, early and uh, got deferred. And so I felt a little down. Like I didn't think I was going to get into a good school or had any potential. So I decided to shoot my shot at all eight Ivy Leagues, um, just like hoping that I would get into one of those. Um, and uh, in the end, it ended up working out. Uh, I talked to my admissions officer. She was super nice about it. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Ivy League, it's, it's definitely been a hard choice to like, kind of like weed through all of them. Uh, like, although like Harvard was like my initial dream, uh, kind of visiting the school and like getting to explore different colleges and stuff. Um, it, I kind of realized that like, at the core level, all the colleges are the same. And uh, what you're really looking for is like, what really speaks to you in terms of like uh, values and uh, uh, interest, student body and everything. Um, I, I, this is so funny, but um, I visited Harvard and Yale. Yale visit days were also like right after. I'd never visited colleges before, um, like applying to like when I was applying, I only visited them when I got in. And um, I had such a great time at Yale. I was like, maybe I should just go for Yale, you know? Um, and uh, especially since my interests are like in the humanities and also the sciences, you know, I wanna be a doctor. So very heavy on the sciences, but also have interest in creative writing and poetry. Um, I wasn't sure what to pick because Yale is very like strong in the creative world. And I think Harvard is very strong in like the pre-med world. Uh, so I was torn. I ended up actually uh, flipping a coin to decide between the two. I had like some of my friends uh, join a Zoom call and uh, I was like, <laughs> they were like, they were like trying to like pull me to Yale. They were like trying to, some of my friends who already chose Harvard were trying to pull me to Harvard. And I was like trying to waver between the two. And it just came down to just like guys like, I'm just gonna flip a coin. Oh um, my for God. Head, and uh, Harvard it was. Wow. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. That's impressive. Flipping a coin. I, you're bold. You're very bold for doing that. That's awesome. So I you're lucky in, too. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, lucky too. It sounds like you're having an amazing time over there and you're really loving everything that's going on. So Harvard's always been on the map. And it's something that it was the initial one that you really wanted to go to. Um what about it drew you to it other than obviously Harvard is Harvard, but what about it really said to you, this is where I should be? Yeah, I um, I did a couple of like research experiments in high school. Um, I competed in the New York City Science and Engineering Fair. And um, the, the way it works is at the New York City level, you get judged by teachers and professors. But at the um, at the international level, you get judged by like PhD, uh, PhD students or people with doctorates and everything. And um, all the judges that I had were, uh, I had a comp like uh, my research was on plant sciences. All of the judges uh, were from Harvard and uh, they kind of talked a lot about uh, the resources available at Harvard and such. And uh, I started to watch like a bunch of YouTube videos on it and uh, found, uh, found it really interesting, like the campus, the history. Um, and I think just like how juxtaposed it was to the high school that I had. I'm from New York City and um, coming into high school, I thought it would be like the, the typical, like, you know, um, high school experiences, the ones that like movies romanticize and everything. Um, but the high school that I went to, uh, I don't know if this is true for like all uh, New York City schools, but definitely for public New York City schools, it was it was nothing like that. We didn't have a, like a football team. We didn't have much of a school spirit. And um, I think Harvard is all about that, like, trying to get its students to like um, go to like big events, you know, uh, Harvard Yale, Harvard Yale game is pretty big. Um, John Harvard is like 
some people there, there's like lies about the John Harvard statue. I don't know, just like those kind of things were like getting me interested. Um, and and yeah. What, what you said? What about the Harvard stat? John Harvard statue? Uh, the, uh, John Harvard statue has uh, three lies. Um, the first lie is that it's not actually John Harvard. Um, it's uh, John Harvard. Uh, uh, had all of its like um, portraits, his books and everything was just in this one library that was built after him when he donated all of his books and um, it all burnt down. So like we could, we, nobody really knew what like John Harvard looked like. And um, Harvard has this tradition of uh, naming something after a president in, at Harvard, right? There's, uh, we have President Lowell, we have Lowell House. That's the house that I got into for next year. Super lucky. Um, that we had president. Lowell House? Yeah, let's touch on that in a second, but we'll, yeah. we'll touch on that after the three lies. I want to hear what this is all about. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, there's also President Winthrop. You got Winthrop House. And then there was this one president. His name was President Hoare. And, uh, you know, the university can, couldn't name a house like, you know, Hoare House. <laughs> so they decided to kill two birds in one stone and have uh, a descendant of uh, President Hoare um who's George I think uh model for this statue uh so that's the first lie it's not even John Harvard um to the year that it was founded it's, I think it's at 1636 that's uh it's a 1638 on the statue but it was founded in 1636 and it wasn't founded by John Harvard it was founded by the Massachusetts Bay Colony um so I, I mean things like that like uh, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but um, some students, especially seniors, to like end off their like years, they come and like pee on the statue as part of like a tradition. Um, so I don't know, things like that got me interested because I never really had that sort of like culture or tradition. Um, right. Here. And uh, yeah. Right. No, that's actually really neat. That's neat. So I mean, it adds a bit of mystique to the whole story of the campus. Absolutely. You mentioned Lowell House. I want to go back there. And I've, I've heard of Lowell House, but I actually don't know what it is. Oh, yeah. Um, well, the way that the the system at Harvard for like residential housing uh, works is that uh, freshmen uh, all live in the yard. Um, so I, that's that was my that was my favorite thing about Harvard. I think just like freshmen living in the same area. Um, I think when I went to like Stanford, uh, everybody was kind of dispersed, like upperclassmen lived with like underclassmen. And I think that kind of like made it harder harder for you to connect with people in the in your same class uh, whereas harvard every all the freshmen live in the same place and mm -hmm. so you're constantly bumping into your friends or like people who are new to college so everybody's like eager to like meet uh, and like introduce themselves uh, so that was like something cool but uh for next year, so when you're an upperclassman, so sophomore, junior, and senior year, uh, you get uh, sorted into your house, kind of like sorting in Harry Potter. Um, it's, it's, it is completely a lottery-based thing, like you don't wear hats, but um, it just put a lottery number in it. But um, there are nine river houses, all named after the presidents of Lowell, and there's three quad houses. Um, quad houses is not very desirable because it's like 10 minutes off campus, so you're kind of like isolated from the rest of the student body but i think uh this year it's uh, it's making its comeback uh, i think the people who party the most got quadded so everybody's probably going to be going to the quad anyway uh people are calling calling it the the quad renaissance uh so we'll see how that goes um but lowell i think is uh, one of the most uh, desirable houses it got recently renovated it has like a basketball court inside a squash court it's just the most like um it's just a building with the most amount of amenities and it's also very central on campus so you're close to everything um but it's uh it's completely like random you can't choose it and yeah that's awesome that's awesome well it sounds like you're gonna have one heck of a semester coming into it in the fall <laughs> yeah 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 thank you <laughs> that'll be great that'll be great so what's caught you by surprise being at harvard different from what you expected going into it what's some things that have kind of stood out stood out and just you know, thrown you for a loop, maybe good or bad. Yeah, um, I think going in, even just like with the whole application process, you think like, oh, um, I'm probably going to go there and it's going to be super competitive. Like, oh, there's probably like a, like in my mind, I had this like ideal version of what a Harvard student was. And when I got there, it was like, none of it was true. Um, I thought like there were going to be so many like white rich people. Um, there definitely are uh, a lot of those but not, uh, not as much as I had thought. Um, in fact, there's a, there's a lot of like uh, movement towards diversity and inclusion. I think um, 40%, no, 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 50 or 60% of the student body receives financial aid. And um, 
the application just break down it's like it's filled with diversity so that was kind of uh shocking and i really like that uh, my roommates they're they're both fgli so that was really nice um one of them's from uh massachusetts so like 10 minutes away from campus the other ones is all the way from california wow. and they're studying two different things and i think um fgli for people that don't know it is uh, first was, generation low income right yeah exactly right, right, right. Yeah. yeah and uh it's super um open on campus and everybody's like super like encouraging about it um so yeah that was like one thing i didn't expect to like see at harvard but i'm, I'm happy that it is super um, open and welcoming that aspect Definitely, definitely, definitely. That's great. Well, wonderful. What about being there? What's been most impactful for you so far? I mean, it's year one down. You've got three to go. Yep. Three to go, right? Yeah. Are you going to finish in four? Yeah, four. Yep. Years. Okay. Yeah. So, what do you think so far has been the most impactful part of your journey? Yeah, uh, most impactful. I think. Uh, I think friends. Friends are just like what make college so much fun um even though like even like i'm pre-med like it's it's quite tough um i think just having like a like a friend group like a solid like home base that you can come back to every day and hang out with all the time that i think uh makes your college so much better like college experience so much better um my goal with uh, freshman year was to try to meet as many people as possible um just i think just the fact that like all the freshmen in eat in like, one dining hall in Annenberg and the fact that we live all close to each other made it super easy and I think like I got to be like 70 to 80 percent of the class and I'm wow. very happy about that because I think um here again in high school never got that but there it's like uh, like usually it would take me like five to six minutes to get to like uh, Annenberg where we eat or like Widener Library where I study but uh, the more I started to meet people, the longer it took me to get there because I would just like be bumping into friends and just be like, oh, hey, what's up? And stuff like that. And by the end of the year, I think it like I, I wouldn't even go. I end up going to the this destination that I end up going and just like follow like friends and just like bump. I don't know. It's just amazing. That's, fun. Um, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So friends, friends are definitely the most impactful part. I think yeah. that's I think that's important. Yeah. I think that's super important. I think it would like what what's it worth if you're just doing it all by yourself, mm -hmm. you exactly. know? Making, yeah. making stories along the way is totally important. So we were just talking about your major, which is neuroscience and poetry, and you created this discipline and kind of walk us through that step, you know, the steps that you took and actually formulating this and, and what prompted you to do it. That's a really, you know, interesting thing to actually create your own major. Yeah, for sure. Um... Yeah, I think it was it was kind of brave of me to do that. Um, there are definitely a couple of Harvard students who have done a special concentration. Um, and I never thought I was going to be interested in humanities. But um, I, I have a little sister. She's uh, she's five years old. And um, we're, we're like we're like super close, like ride or die. Um, and uh, I thought I was always like big on like STEM and sciences. But uh, when I was like picking her up from school and like spending time with her and like reading books and like Dr. Seuss and stuff. Um, it kind of like stuck out to me how like people like Dr. Seuss or like Shel Silverstein, if you've read like um, The Giving Tree, how they're able to like compress big topics like altruism and like forgiveness and all of that and like so little words and like so impactful too, kind of stuck out to me. And um, back then I was doing a Teen State Charge, which is the, the biggest youth led activist group in New York City. And um, I was like, maybe I should like experiment with like poetry and stuff. And um, I was writing like, just like putting like words, like trying to like create like this like curtain of like themes and meanings um, and like a, like a rhythmic stuff, like me, like I, when I was speaking, it just had to be like, like touching and stuff like that. Um, I really liked that and ended up like um, sharing that. Um, and uh, one of my poems, it's called uh, Democracy and COVID uh, was featured on television. And then that kind of opened me up to like a lot of opportunities and got me excited on what I could do with like English and stuff. English isn't my first language. I came here uh, 10 years ago and struggled a lot with like trying to like learn it because it is very strange, like compared to like Russian and Uzbek, which are like my um, my primary languages. Um, but yeah, and it was like super fun. And when I was like, when I got to college, I definitely wanted to explore that more. Um, talked about that in my essays. And uh, yeah, when I got to Harvard, they they had like a big um, organization fair of like careers and everything. And um, 
this woman, she was so nice as she was like in charge of the special concentration program at Harvard. I was just talking to her for fun. and I didn't even know she was in charge of that. And um, like, she was like, oh my God, you should totally do this. Like she exchanged like emails and everything. And now she's uh, my advisor. Um, wow. I'll see if I end up actually going with this because it, it is a lot of work. And um, pre-med on itself is already enough for me. Yeah. Um, I'll see if I end up going with this, but it is, it is something cool that I, I do want to do. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So you've been able to do a lot with it, um, you know, from the creative side as well. From the STEM side, which you can argue is creative also, it's a different type of creativity. But, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. yeah, no, with that being said, neuroscience, would you think, is that what you're leaning towards is some sort of, uh, you know, neuro, like neuro focus is in terms of medicine or are you just interested in neuroscience in general? And then you are figuring out the medicine side later. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of like different fields at Harvard in terms of just like pre-med. There's like uh, microbiology, um, human evolutionary biology and all of that. I just knew that I was like very interested in chemistry. And um, I also like thought the the pathway that's called it's called the mind brain and behavior pathway was really cool because it's it's a little bit more flexible um and neuroscience i think is like very applicable um to like things that i might do later on because it has like math and stuff like that at one point last semester i did consider dropping out of pre-med and doing consulting uh, but not anymore <laughs> Definitely not um so i'm, I'm very set on pre-med um and I hope it works out. And uh, neuroscience just seems cool. Like a, a couple of my blockmates who are, who are like the close friends uh, I have at Lowell, um, they're also doing neuroscience. And I think it's like a good like support system that I have there. Totally, totally, totally. Well, that's very neat that you're touching both sides of the spectrum there. And uh, it'll be a, it'll be interesting to see the path ahead and what you decide to do. I think can't go wrong either way. I mean, it sounds like you're going to be sure. passionate about whatever it is you decide to do. So that's that wonderful. Sense. That's wonderful. Um, your organizations, tell us about that. So you're part of HSA, you're part of Outspoken Narrative, World Pre-Health Conference, Polo, and then outside of campus, you're involved in the National Geographic Group and Teens Take Charge. So whatever, whichever one of those you want to touch on, um, or a couple of them if you want, but tell us about these and how'd you get, how'd you get involved in these clubs? Um, like I said, like coming in, I was, um, pretty set on being pre-med but I wasn't sure if it was like something that I wanted to do because it isn't the most lucrative field like um, everybody at Harvard was talking about like consulting and how that was big like econ is also very big at Harvard so coming in I wanted to explore like the business and the econ world just to see how I kind of fit it like fit in that kind of scene so I I joined HSA which is Harvard Student Agencies it's super fun super cool you get to work with like your friends um and uh, just like your, run your own business. Uh, HSA is just like this umbrella uh, organization within like, which has like different organizations. I've actually it. heard of HSA. They've got yeah. like a pre-law program as well. And yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like that's tutoring that has it. Tutoring is also part of HSA. HSA is like a $10 million business. Wow. And within it has like its own businesses. I was part of Trademark Tours, which gave like official Harvard tours um, on campus, wow. um, which was super fun. But I did leave, um, I think, February um just because i was like my schedule was super packed i wanted to explore other things and uh, i think that's what's so amazing about college is that you can explore different things and see what you like and don't like uh so first semester i was exploring business and econ and then second semester uh, i was like okay econ isn't really my thing i do want to do pre-med um i also wanted to explore like sports and stuff like that because that was really fun too uh so then uh, we have like something called comping um which is basically like tryouts or auditions um there's also like walking on which is similar for like sports uh, i wanted to do polo badminton swim uh, so that's what i'm kind of part of in terms of sports and um, polo, I think you're talking about actually riding the horse and hitting riding the ball right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. That's awesome. Do you have to, yeah. do you have to bring your own horse or do they provide the horses? Oh, no, they definitely, they definitely provide the horse. It is a little bit far from campus. Um, but I grew up in a farm back uh, in Uzbekistan where I was born and it was just nice to kind of get into that like nature, um, aspect. Um, but I think like one of my favorite organizations, um, is the world pre-health conference. Um, the reason I like it is because like I'm surrounded by like pre-meds who aren't um who maybe i should like rephrase this pre-meds who are very like extroverted and outgoing 
um they're they like are always down to say like they're more like a yes person kind of thing they're always down mm -hmm. to do stuff and um they bring a lot of creativity into the organizations and i, I want to continue that i would continue working with that but um yeah we had a conference this year it was virtual but next year it's going to be in person um and we basically bring in bring in like very prominent um people in the medical field to come speak and we make it super accessible to people all over the world and um stuff like that so i really like that and now it's both narrative it's just a way for my like um creative side to just take charge and like write about um nature and such um next semester though i do really want to join uh the crimson which is our newspaper article right and um see how that ends up going but it is a bit of a commitment and next year i'm going to take four PSA classes so i don't know if you'll ever like actually see me outside but we'll see <laughs> how it goes like pre-med next year is is definitely going to be um uh me in the trenches yeah well good luck i tell you what if, if people have gotten gotten through it before you, I'm sure you can do it. It sounds like yeah. you've got got the aptitude to do it. So that's awesome, though. Really cool that you're a part of so many different organizations. I think, I mean, I didn't put polo. I don't know of many colleges that offer polo. That's really cool. That's a really cool sport. I mean, I just wear the shirts. I've never been. <laughs> but, I love polo, too. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Very cool. Well, what do you hope to see coming out of these orgs? I know you've said it a lot where you get to bounce around. You kind of get to explore these different paths. But what do you really hope at the end of the day, if you can say, uh, you know, I chose the right orgs or I got everything I wanted out of them, what would that be? Yeah, um, I still don't know if these are like the orgs that I'm going to stick with for the next four years. I'm definitely still exploring. And it's like just I just finished my first year. Um, but what I really hope to gain out of like student orgs is uh like an outlet to explore my interests outside of just like academics um the all the clubs that i am in currently are like things uh, that are outside of pre-med and i think that's like a very um necessary thing for you to like keep you happy it's also just like good for your mental health and stuff um but yeah and uh i guess uh for clubs in general i also just want to meet people um that i might not have met um in at harvard but yeah, I mean, that's, it's, yeah, I can't yeah. really say. No, that's, that's, that's perfect. I think that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So after college, you've said pre-med a lot, medical school, would that come directly afterwards? Is yeah. that the thought process there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if uh, I'm going to go directly after college. Um, it is definitely a very uh, common pathway. We like take the, sorry, we take the MCAT during uh, junior year and stuff. But uh, my interviewer who interviewed me for Harvard, we got to chat after I got in and um, she goes to Cornell uh, for medical school. And she told me a lot about like um, how like medical schools want to like uh, actually see if you're interested in pre-med, like if you're dedicated to it and like want you to like explore yourself and like spend uh, time a year or two. Like some students even take like four or five gap years between like mm -hmm. college and medical school um, and stuff. And uh another big aspect of like me wanting to take a possible gap year or two is to make like bank like uh, a common thing that a lot of like medical students do um is uh take some time off to work in consulting and then uh because they pay a lot especially if you have a degree from harvard um definitely above like six figures so i think that might be an option if i want to like be able to support myself after you know because medical school is super expensive um so that is also a possible route but at well, this point, I think like what I always say is like go with the flow. So if the flow is leading me, like just go straight into medical school, I might do that. If yeah. not, then we'll see. But definitely happy, happy where I am. No, I love that. That's wonderful. I think that's a that's a great mentality to kind of bring into it is is go with the flow. And you know, you can really dig yourself into a into a path and before you know it, you're down something you didn't even want to be in. So I think it's I think you're bringing the right approach to it all, which is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no, 100%. Well, I'm excited to see what the what the next three years hold for you. And uh, obviously, after that, I mean, we're going to close this out with some closing questions. So whatever comes to your mind first, just shoot. But uh, first one is, what is the most stressful part of being a student day in and day out? Mm, I think balance. Um, like, uh, in high school, I was definitely more of like a, like a type A student, you know, like get my stuff done and then like be able to have fun, right? Like I was like, oh, if I get my assignments early, 
then I have all this free time to like go out, um, hang out with friends, you know, drive around and stuff like that. But at college, there's always like fun stuff happening that like uh, uh, you don't want to like have like fear of missing out. FOMO is really big on campus uh, and you have to kind of like balance those two, like, you know, uh, social and academic life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that has been like the, the the most difficult aspect. Like sometimes I'm like studying, I'm like, oh, it was like today a good day to study. Like what if I should have been like, you know, out there like networking or like making friends and just having like a good time. Cause I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that's uh, the biggest challenge, but I mean, I don't think there's like a lose-lose situation. I think it's just more of like, oh, uh, in this situation, like what's better, but yeah, trying to get better at determining uh, which more to focus on at the, at the, at the moment, you know? Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Definitely. Next question. What is the most meaningful way for students to help each other? Mm, okay. I think, uh, being there or like inviting people to whatever you're doing. I think, um, uh, whenever you're like inviting someone, it shows that you care about them and like, you're keeping them in mind. Like it can be something small as like, oh, you know, let's get lunch together. Like my friends are going out for lunch. You want to come or something like, oh, we're having like a study session, like feel free to join, but like no talking, you know, but things like that, I think uh, is, is really nice uh, and goes a long way in terms of like getting your friends to motivate you and uh, help you uh, academically. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Well, I, I'll interject really quick i remember i had a study group freshman year first week <laughs> and these kids were kind of like hey you know no one no one's really allowed in this study group like i don't know if you're going to be allowed i was like whoa 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 <laughs> and we went in there and it was actually just fine i think there's just like a weird little barrier people have to break down sometimes but that's that's a great piece of advice you know always always include people um yeah. i love that Okay, next question. What do you suggest to any student that is looking to study at Harvard, whether they've gotten in or not? Um, well, I think if you've gotten in, I think my biggest piece of advice that I've gotten from freshman year is to meet as many people as possible. Um, like people are always down to meet new people, I think. And um, it it doesn't hurt to just be nice and like say compliment them or you know it won't take anything away from you if anything it will make their day or something and um, nice words go a long way so I think just like being nice and like trying to greet people for people who are applying to Harvard um, I'd say uh, get to meet professors um, really find, like figure out if like Harvard is the right place for you I think if you can like hone in on like a specific niche or like a specific topic at Harvard then I think that'll go a long way in your application um, and authenticity you know veritas so yeah no definitely 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 um, next question which is a big question what's your biggest hope to accomplish during your time on earth oh damn okay um I think my biggest goal is uh, like, I guess the reason that I even wanted to be a doctor in the first place, first place was um, to open up uh, a high school in, um, in Uzbekistan. Um, like when I came into the US 10 years ago, exactly 10 years ago, um, I was like, the schools here are so much better. Like I wish like my friends um, got to experience what I was experiencing. And um, I knew that like, back then I was like oh yeah the biggest things I pay is like doctors and lawyers so I want to be a doctor or a lawyer so I can make money and build a school back there so I ended up going the doctor route um I don't know if that was like the I, right now I don't know if it's the most lucrative field but I just know that like in the end all I want to do is have like a high school that gets um students um from Uzbekistan or any parts of Central Asia into colleges in the U.S. and uh in the U.K. So wow. that was my, my, my big goal. I don't know. I'm hopeful that it'll one day work out, but that's yeah. like what I'm doing when I'm like retired and chilling. And I'm like, oh, hey, I used to be in your shoes. You know, I'm just like chilling now, but you'll get that's there. That's awesome. No, that's really cool. I love that. I mean, at the heart of that, that's giving back to others. That's that's really cool. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm rooting you on for that. Let me know how I can help. <laughs> Thank um, you so much. <laughs> next question. What's your top piece of advice for those who are early in their educational journey? Mm. I don't know I think the I think I would like give advice 
on an advice that I would actually kind of take and like I, I learned um later on is um like I'm in New York City and I think I realized that much much later on um like the the people that are around me or you know just the fact that it is New York City I never got to go out to the city and explore uh, I think that really opened up um, doors for me. So I think um, my biggest piece of advice, uh, people on their educational journey is to just like go out and like really figure out what your like strengths are and what you really are interested in. Because I think that can, once you figure out like what your like passion is, um, it will help you determine like what you want to do in college and beyond and what makes you happy, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great advice. Yeah, go out and explore, figure it out, you know, make some mistakes along the way. Exactly. Um, Beirut, it's been awesome to have you on. Thank you so much for sharing everything. Where can people follow more about you, keep up with everything that you're doing? What's a good place for them to tag along? Oh, like a place to like contact me? Yeah, contact you, social medias, whatever's best for you. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I think the the best way, I'm always on Instagram. So my Instagram is at nyc.com my name so b-e-h-r-u-z n-y-c dot Behrouz. um it's kind of turned into like an inside joke on campus but yeah you can find me there or um i'm not sure if you're able to share my email but if you guys have any questions feel free to reach out via email happy to help um yeah wonderful 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 well Behrouz, again thank you so much for coming on i'm super excited for you thank you so much yeah